Melissa with Californians Against Waste. So today I'm going to give you guys a legislative update and let you know what to expect this year. So um, if you don't know who Californians Against Waste is, and Mark sort of already introduced our organization, we are a research and advocacy organization working towards policy solutions to pollution, waste reduction, source reduction, and recycling. So before I start um, talking about what's, what happened this year, let's talk about what happened last year. So we banned bags. Thank you. Yeah, so Prop 67 was affirmed by California voters. This was, you know, not a fight that we picked, and we really didn't know what the outcome was going to be because we were outspent by the opposition. And so I just want to thank everyone here who spent time on, on this effort. So thank you. And special thank you to NICRA, and we already mentioned this, but they made a really great rap video, some bags, and did some phone banking events. So thanks, NICRA. So back to what's happening this year. So one of the big focuses this year is implementing all of the organics policy that we've worked to make law. And so a few of these include a 75% diversion goal, a requirement on businesses to arrange for organic waste recycling, a prohibition on diversion credit for alternative daily cover, or green waste as alternative daily cover, a, yeah. Um, permitting uh, compost facilities, requirement for cities to plan for compost, and some tax exemptions for recycling equipment. So there's a lot of I could talk about with these, but I won't go into too much detail. So something we're working on this year is implementing the second phase of AB 1826. So in this past January, we entered the second phase, which brought in businesses who generate at least four cubic yards of organic waste. So this one is a really big deal, and I really want to emphasize that because it kind of flew under the radar last year, and more and more you're hearing about it, so I'm glad that you know, people are starting to realize how, big, how much big of a deal this is. So this is going to completely change the industry, and it's going to change what we all do. So this is SB 1383, the Short-Lived Climate Pollution Reduction Act, and it's currently in the beginning stages of regulatory development, and this is going to be a total game changer for local governments. So um, this tasks CalRecycle to require state, the statewide diversion of organic waste with penalties for noncompliance. So big deal. These are the two most important um, goals within SB 1383. So the first one being a 75% statewide reduction in disposal of organic waste by 2025. 75%. That's a lot. <laughs> so the other important goal is the food recovery goal of redu or, um, recovering, diverting 20% of all edible food that's currently disposed of by 2025. So feeding hungry people and putting less food in landfills. So we don't know exactly what it's going to look like at the end of the road when we get to that 75%, but we know we're going to need compost programs similar to what we have in the Bay Area, but statewide. And uh, CalRecycle is going to need especially a lot of input with the 20% food recovery goal. So if you are an expert in that, please submit public comments. Please engage. Sign up for the listserv. You know, there's a lot of things you can be doing, and it's going to really help out the implementation of that to make sure we get to, that, to those goals. So um, these are a few other recent legislation, uh, through re uh, recent bills that were, turned, were passed into law, and we're currently working on implementing these programs, remaining engaged on advisory councils, making sure that we get strong programs um, out of these recycling, mattress recycling, paint recycling, carpet recycling, and the carpet recycling is especially difficult at this moment. <laughs> so let's talk about new bills that were introduced this year. So first I'll mention AB 1288. So we know that we need more composting infrastructure if we're going to meet this, the goals outlined in SB 1383. And the problem with the current AB 939 approach is that local governments and city councils are going to, city councils are going to have some really difficult votes and they're going to have to raise rates. And that's going to make for a really bumpy road to get to that 75% diversion. So we need to generate money on a statewide level in order to make this process smoother. 
So we can do that by either raising the $1.40 state fee as a part of landfill tip fees, or we could create a new generator fee. So that would look like maybe a line item on someone's garbage bill, similar to what you see here on the bottom right. It's, it would just be like something like a dime a month, but it would make a big difference. We don't want to, or sorry, we're, we're gonna be compromising and you know finding a solution to this. We don't want a poison pill for anyone, but we just, we really need to address the issue of statewide funding for compost, that's the example. So there's a few bills in the legislature, a couple bills that are addressing banning polystyrene. Yeah. So there's one in the Senate, one in the assembly. We're working closely with the authors on these bills. Um, these are a work in progress, so they're not quite where they're going to be yet, and we're going to need a lot of support on this. So, you know, contact your legislators, uh, send support letters, anything you can do. And if you live in an area that doesn't currently have a polystyrene ban, just contact us. You can come to me, um, talk to me, and we'll give you the resources to get that started. So we're working on a couple food waste bills. The first one is a, an issue we worked on last year, which is food date labels. And so, thank you. So uh, date labels, as you know, come in a variety, of endless variety of phrases, sell by, best by, use by, freshest by, enjoy by. And people don't quite understand the difference between a safety and a quality date. And so in the past year, uh, the industry, two major industry, groups have come up with a voluntary implementation of starting to use two uniform phrases, one to communicate quality and one to communicate safety. So this bill is looking to promote the widespread use of those two, stand of those two uniform labels in order to lay a foundation for consumer education. And so the other food waste bill is um, AB 1219, and this is the California Good Samaritan Food Donation Act. So we're looking to strengthen and expand on the existing laws that protect food donors because currently a lot of potential food donors are still afraid of liability, and we're looking to sort of fill some of those gaps so we can get more food to people who need it and less to landfills. So here are a couple other uh, CAW bills, the, one, the first one being AB 1036. So this is looking at some specific barriers to composting or permitting compost facilities. And currently there's, there are some contradicting you know, state agency regulations that are making it difficult and we're trying to kind of address that issue with this bill. And the other one being a bill that we did last year as well, this is a tire recycling incentive program, so that's AB 509. So here's some other priority legislation that we are not necessarily um, sponsoring, but we're you know, definitely prioritizing. The first one being AB 1158, which CPSC is taking the lead on. This is uh, addressing the carpet recycling program and making the industry do what they are supposed to be doing. So the other one being AB 319, and this, is, this one's cool. This is the Leash the Lid bill. And so it's requiring bottle caps to be tethered to bottles in order to reduce bottle cap pollution. And I think Ruth has a petition today so find her, and yeah. And uh, another issue is uh, we're prioritizing this year is medical needles. There are a couple bills in the legislature addressing that issue. So a continuing priority for CAW is securing funding for Cal Recycle through the Cap and Trade Program, the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. So last year we were able to get 40 million, and this year we we're thinking it's gonna be a lot harder to get that funding again, and we're gonna need a lot of support. This is, you know, becoming harder and harder every year, and so definitely look out for some action items on that. Um, another thing that we're engaging on is the California Healthy Soils Initiative, and John Wick had, had mentioned this one. Um, so we see this as a really great way to create a market for compost and to sell more compost. So we're you know attending the public workshops and giving our input and definitely being engaged on that one. So that's everything I have for you guys. If you have any questions, let me know, and feel free to come up, and we can talk about anything I discussed today. I got to say, all of the speakers are nailing the ten minutes. Uh, we've we've officially um, scared you to death and made you do it. Uh, but we build that we build it this way so we have time for questions. So, who has a question out there? Yes, Rebecca in front. I have a question regarding. And the two different types of fees that do it, um, 
propose, one is on a tonnage fee on landfills, one is on a generator fee. Which are you inclined towards? So we're still working through that, and we're still talking with all the stakeholders, but those are the two options that we're we're looking to propose. Can you restate them? So yeah, so the first one being the um, increasing the, the state fee on the landfill tip fee. So current, it hasn't been updated since 1995, and looking to update that, um, increase that. And the other being a generator fee, so it would be like a like a little line item on your garbage bill. All right. Julie, do you have something? I, I was just wondering if CAW is looking at any market development bills. Because from Jerry Powell's presentation earlier, we're going to have a real problem with markets if um, China continues to do what they're doing. Um, anything looking at domestic markets? So I, there aren't. Restate this. Oh, um, it was a question about a market development, if there are any, legis any legislation on that issue. And so I believe there is one bill addressing that issue, but um, not sure if there are too many this year. But that's something that we are consistently working on. We so. are working on a PET market development policy that could mm -hmm. be some combination of minimum recycled content and or incentives for utilizing post-consumer PET here in California. So we're very fixated on that. Mm -hmm. Right over here, probably our last last one. I think Heidi is going to. She's gonna Heidi's going to talk about that. Car for cycling. It's like the MESPN. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you Thanks. so much. All right. I got to say, I think. I think we did a really good job of, of putting these speakers together and having the topics kind of flow together. Um, a couple quick things I wanted to mention. I know there's a lot of great information that's come through. We are videoing. Andre is back there. Um, I don't actually think he's standing right there. There he is. Okay, so uh, Andre's videoing, and we are going to get the videos out um, hopefully by mid-April at the latest. Thank you to Andre.